Hey guys, it's Steve here from Coils and Coins Detecting, and I've got five more tips for you for the MineLab Equinox series of detectors. Tip number one, on the back of your control panel, there are four gold terminals uh, for the charging socket. So the charging socket has corresponding pins and it uh, magnetically slips into place here and it's shaped so they can only go in one way. If I zoom in a bit, uh, these pins can get dirty over time. They can get dust, um, you know, you can get salt water on them. If you, if you submerge the unit, various other materials can get onto these terminals and you can have trouble charging it. So you just can't, you'll find that you just can't get it to charge easily. You've got to muck about and move the uh, connector around. The tip is use an eraser, a white eraser. I'll just zoom out a bit something like this one and clean the eraser on some paper first so you get all the the grotty stuff off it and then just get into the into the terminals and use the eraser just to go across the terminals back and forth like so don't have to push hard and what you'll find is that it'll brighten those terminals up it'll get rid of all the corrosion uh, or the the grime not so much corrosion if there's corrosion on them you're in trouble but grime and uh, dirt and silt, dust, that kind of stuff, it will get rid of them and it'll make the contact much nicer. Um, and you'll find that you don't have as much trouble when you try to charge. So that's tip number one. Okay, tip number two. Um, joining the coil to your shaft uh, is the infamous bolt, plastic bolt. And the issues people have been having, it's not so much with the bolt, but it's with the ears on the coil snapping off. And why does that happen? Well, it's happening because there's too much pressure on these ears pulling them pulling them in. And that happens because um, inside uh, inside the um, the shaft stem down in here, on the inside there are these teardrop washers. Um, and you can buy these replacement ones, uh, these teardrop washers. But what's happening is you put those inside and over time they compress and so what happens is the coil gets loose and what do we do we tighten this bolt more and more and more to try and keep that coil from moving too much so what then happens is as this compresses more and more we put more pressure on these ears to the point where eventually they weaken and over time they just break and that's happened a lot to people so my tip is buy yourself a, a set of replacement teardrop washers, which you can get from pretty much any mine lab parts supplier anywhere in the world. And you can get different thickness ones. You can get, um, I don't know, five mil, six mil, seven mil, three or four mil as well. And normally when you buy a packet of them, you get a mixture of uh, sizes and replace these every, depends how much you move your coil around, but uh, every six, maybe 12 months or so, just to make sure that you're not putting pressure on this uh, these ears here make sure that they're not bent inward because as you tighten this bolt more and more you're putting pressure on these ears they bend in and they weaken on the joint down here and eventually they will break so we don't want that to happen replace those teardrop washers every 12 months or so and then you won't have to do the bolt up as tight uh, you can even use you know one on one side and put uh, two on the other side, maybe a, a thick one and a thinner one on one side and a, and a thick one on the other side and then you won't have to do the bolt up as tight and it'll stay in place and won't put pressure on there. So that's tip number two. Okay, so tip number three relates to pin pointers. Pretty much everybody who does uh, a fair bit of metal detecting will by now have their own pin pointer um, and there are quite a few different models out there. Now this is the XP MI4, there's also the Garrett Carrot, there's um, MineLab uh, ProFind detectors and there's a host of others. What a lot of people don't realise um, is that the pin pointer can be ground balanced. So just like your metal detector can be ground balanced to, um, to calibrate uh, the machine for mineralisation in the ground, your pin pointer can do the same thing. And you might ask, well, why do I care about that? Well, what that means is when you're trying to find a target in the hole, if the soil around the target is highly mineralized, your pinpoint is going to beep uh, everywhere and you're going to find it very, very hard to find the target, to home in on it. So all you've got to learn how to do 
to make it a lot easier for yourself is to ground balance the pin pointer. How do you do that? Well, on most pin pointers, you can do it by simply turning the pin pointer on when it's against the soil. So against the plug or against the soil where the target is not um, located or if on quiet ground near the hole. Just put it on the ground, turn your pin pointer on. Um, and then what'll happen is it'll ground balance to the soil uh, and it'll allow you to find the target a lot more quickly. So the tip number three that I've got for you is learn how to ground balance your pin pointer. It'll make finding your targets a whole lot easier, especially in mineralized soil, black sand, uh, that kind of material. It'll just uh, make your life heaps easier. So that's tip number three. So tip number four uh, is a fairly general one, but I feel it's a pretty important one. And sometimes it's overlooked um, because the Equinox is extremely good at, um, at getting rid of ground noise at mineralization, neutralizing mineralization and so on. And ground balance uh, is defaulted to zero in most modes. And we kind of get lazy, I think, after a while. We don't ground balance the machine. So tip number four relates to ground balance. Uh, and my point would be here, uh, if you've been over an area and you've found a really good patch with uh, lots of nice old coins uh, on that patch of ground and you've been over it so many times you've lost count, you're not finding anything there anymore, my tip is to ground balance the machine on the same patch of ground and you will find that you'll be able to hear targets more clearly that might have been obscured by the little bit of mineralization that might be in that ground. And the detector will actually uh, seek more deeply and you will find more targets in that same patch, maybe even more of the nice old coins that you were finding before. I'm not gonna go into how to ground balance uh, on this tip video. I'm gonna do a separate one on, on ground balancing. Um, but my tip is, Ground balance your machine on old ground, uh, find a quiet patch of ground and ground balance. Look at the manual on how to ground balance and probably the most, uh, the most straightforward way to ground balance with the Equinox is to use auto ground balance. So you press, uh, you go into the menu using the um, gear button, move across to ground balance and then all you do is hold the accept reject button down while you pump the coil over the ground that's, uh, that's a known quiet bit of ground and it'll ground balance the machine, you'll be able to see, the machine will be able to hear more clearly and see more clearly, and you will find more targets in old ground, on old ground where you, you think you've done it to death. So that's tip number four. And tip number five relates to, uh, fairly generally uh, relates to lithium ion batteries, rechargeable batteries, and that's what the uh, MindLab Equinox machine has in them. And the batteries are down in this part of the machine here in this this, uh, this battery compartment here. So my tip on lithium ion batteries is a couple of things. First of all, lithium ion batteries do not like to be kept at full charge for long periods of time. They actually are best stored. So if you're gonna store your detector away for several months and not use it, you're better off having the battery charged at about 50%, not 100% when you store it away. If you, if you store it at 100%, it'll actually degrade the battery. So 50% is best, and that way you're not stressing the battery out. The other thing about lithium ion batteries is that they perform better when you, um, when you don't fully charge them and then fully discharge them and continue to cycle in that way. What they much prefer is charge it to about 90%, maybe, maybe just 100% when it's just fully charged. Then when you go out and use it, let it get to about 50%. So on the Equinox, that would be, it's a bit hard to tell on the Equinox 50%, but I would say lose two bars and, and still have a third bar lit up and then recharge it back to three bars and kind of keep it cycling through that pattern rather than charging to 100% and letting it get right down to nothing and then back to 100 and back to nothing. Try and cycle it between about 90 and 50% and you will find the battery will last a lot longer and the third thing is um, lithium ion batteries do not like um, extreme temperatures at all. So I would definitely not recommend keeping your detector in a hot car all the time or in freezing cold conditions in the car all the time. So between zero Celsius and 40 Celsius is the, 
sort of the range of a lithium ion battery for it to retain its uh, its recharging capability and and you know and extend the life of the battery so if you're exposing the battery and the detector to extreme temperatures regularly um, it will shorten the life of the battery so tip number five is um, just get into the habit of thinking about those battery related issues and ways to extend your battery and I've just given you the, the three main ones there so that's tip number five that's all for this video guys all the best with your hunting I hope you find some cool stuff and I'll catch you on the next video